Hello and welcome. In today's exciting episode, I make this Berta jacket. It's Berta 6123. And I make it in the most difficult way possible, even though it's a super easy jacket. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So today's episode, that super simple um, it's called Super Easy Burda Jacket that's dolman sleeves, which means the sleeves are grown on. There's not a separate torso and sleeves. They're all in one. So first I traced out the pattern. There's a front left, front right, and you can either cut the back in two or you can cut it on the fold as one piece. So I um, am doing it as one piece, but I think if you haven't done many jackets before it might be easier to cut it out as two separate pieces just because trying to fit all the pieces on the one bit of tweed that I had was really difficult so yeah you might want to cut the back as two pieces but I absolutely hate a center back seam so I sort of put in a little more effort and moving around the pieces shuffling them until I got it just right so this is the tweed that I'm using it is absolutely gorgeous all rainbow so I've got my structural layer which is netting or petticoat netting and then I've got my tweed, which I'm going to stitch to it. So I've cut them all out just using the same pattern pieces. So I've got one back and I've got a left front and I've got a right front. So now I'm going to pin the tweed layer on top of the structural layer. So the, the structural layer just sort of holds up the tweed. So the tweed can be beautiful, but it won't collapse you'll be able to actually see how beautiful it is. So normally you would just stitch the two layers together and then stitch the the um, pieces of the jacket together. But what I'm going to do, because this is a, such a simple jacket, I'm going to embellish it. So I'm going to effectively stitch the layers together while adding sequins and beads. If you're using heavy beads, I wouldn't recommend you do it at this stage. I recommend you make the jacket first, then do the beading. It's more structurally sound, but if you're using something super light like sequin, which I am, then you can do it first, which is um, you might have, if you've ever seen any videos from Dior or um, Chanel, that's kind of the way they do it. And yeah, so I've pinned them all together so they're going to stay in place. And then I'm going along and hand stitching on sequins. These are sequins and a, a couple of beads that I actually used in a beaded trim for something else a few years ago. But then I decided I didn't like it for that project. And the great thing about um, doing beading properly, like the expensive way to do beading and embroidery, is that you just cut the thread and everything comes apart. There's no glue or anything thing everything is just stitched in place so you can use the same beads over and over again for like a hundred years in different projects which is awesome I was originally going to use green beads which is why I'm doing this they're sort of olivey green and um which is why I was doing it this month these beads but then I was like oh I sort of got the indecisions and um I always love green and and aqua and blue together so I thought well maybe I'll do them because they were near the other grass green beads and then I have these as well um I just have a Chanel jacket and I want to redo the hand beaded trim and that's why I have these ones. And I thought, oh, they do match. There's pink and that green in there. I think I'll save them for the Chanel because they're kind of too delicate but also too big for this particular tweed. And then I thought, well, um, maybe the pinks, leaning into the pinks more. But then, yeah, I mean, they do look gorgeous together. And I could have included more of the greens. But then, oh, and I also had these green and cream coloured ones. They would have been interesting on it. And there's not much else I can match them with. But anyway, I decided to go with these white and silver ones from a previous project. But it's always fun getting out the different coloured beads to see the different ways that a project could play out. So now I'm just um, going along and you... I just use poly thread, cotton's not quite as strong, and two strands, and then I just stitch it together. And so here's the 
I just have the pattern there to <laughs> remind me why I'm doing this because it does take a long time. And if you can sort of see, it's a check design. So there's horizontal lines and there's vertical lines. So I'm doing horizontal lines, just going in grid formation from left to right. And then um, go, once the, the horizontal ones were done, I did all the vertical ones. And I did the left and the right side first. But if you're not really sure how you want it to turn out, do a sample one first or at the very least start at the back or the arms, somewhere that isn't the most obvious bit. Start there and sort of get into your rhythm because, yeah, once you've done beading for a little while or um, you sort of or stitching, you get into a very clear rhythm that's your natural rhythm of beading and it sort of impacts the way that you put beads on. Start in a less obvious place and then sort of work your way around to, you know, the front, the top of the front because that's the, going to be the most visible part. So here I am slowly working away at everything. It's not the most cinematic thing to do because all you're literally doing is sewing one bead on at a time. Some of them are little stacks. So what you do is you bring your needle up through the netting and through the tweed. Then you put on a tiny bead, then a sequin, then a tiny bead, then a sequin, then another tiny bead. And then you go back down. I, obviously the top bead you only go through that once but everything else you go through twice and then you sort of just keep doing that all the way along so I did the front and the back and so now I'm sort of I started with a full jar and I'm only oh, it's about halfway not even so I think I'll make another jacket with the rest of them but I'm really happy with this I thought I might go back and do more like add more and more but I'm quite happy with this it's subtle from far away but when you get up close you can see just how much work there is there and I'm happy with the it's sort of striking the balance I mean it's so unique that no one in the world literally no one in the world will have a jacket like this but it's also subtle enough that I can wear it to a meeting say and most people who have zero interest in fashion won't even notice how embellished it is so I think it strikes the right sort of balance for the type of thing that I like to wear you know it's incredibly unique but without being to look at me look at me so I'm happy with that. So I've here we go. I'm checking all my pieces over. So once you've done them, you obviously have to check them. So I've got my left side and my right side. And each time I finish a piece, I just carefully fold it away. And then I've got my back done as well. So yeah, as I said, I'm just carefully going over them, checking everything. If if you've pulled something or you haven't pulled the thread all the way through, then you just cut the extra and tie it or you just undo a bit and do that section again. It's better to do it now than to have pro ongoing problems with your jacket the whole time that you're wearing it. So I just make sure the whole thing is perfect at this stage because it's still flat. So it's actually quite easy to do it at this point. And yeah, it's just turning out so beautifully. And of course, I've left um, like an inch or an inch and a half along each of the sides because you do have a your seam allowance is obviously smaller than that but you need the foot of your sewing machine needs to have a clear run you don't want your foot smashing all this beautiful sequin embellishment work that you've done so you can either choose to embellish right up until the seam line or what I'm doing is I'm leaving a bit and I'm going to machine sew my pieces together and machine sew the lining to the outer jacket. And once that's done, I'll go back and I'll add a little bit more embellishment just to cover those bits that I didn't do around the seam lines. So once you are happy with the level of embellishment and the quality of the embellishment, for now, you're still going to do that last bit at the end once everything's together. But once you're happy with the way it is for now, then yeah, and you've carefully checked every piece, it's time to set them aside. And well, actually, then I worked on my patchwork jacket. So I dumped out all of my patch, um, my scraps, cut them into strips, and then I sewed all the strips together and cut out the pieces of the jacket. 
And um, so this is the magical forest side. And then the other side was Las Vegas at night. So sort of navy blue and black with some metallic gold and super soaked colours. And then I made the two jackets and then I combined them into one. This is the finished jacket, both sides of it. So now it is time. And meanwhile, this one was nicely folded in the corner. So now it is time to get this baby back out and finish it. First, I unpacked the back of the jacket carefully and laid that down with the right side up. So I've got the inside down. And then I laid the left and the right fronts over the top. And I'm just lining up the top edge of the sleeves and the shoulders because I'm just going to pin that bit. And this is me admiring my embellishment work. The threads are really nice and neat. And that's important because it helps the jacket age well. Nothing is going to wear or snag. Anyway, so don't worry about the bottom of the sleeve and the side just yet because um, if you're making a patchwork jacket or something with a cheaper, more sturdy fabric, you can do all the side seams and the arm seams at once. But if you're using tweed, it's a delicate fabric. You're just going to have to do the top of the arms first and then you're going to, so I machine sewed, pinned them, then I machine sewed them, and now I pinned back the seam allowance. Next time I make this out of tweed, I'm going to make sure I'm going to add a big, much bigger seam allowance, maybe an inch of tweed on either side to make this bit here much easier. I'm not going to make a bigger size because that won't be correct. I'm just going to add an extra, you know, three quarters of an inch seam allowance along every seam. I think that will make it easier for me. Anyway, so I hand stitched down all the seam allowance and now it is time to carefully turn the whole thing over. And I've rolled up so you can see the bald patch where there's no embellishment yet. So now I'm just going to have to fill in this bit here. And it's much easier to do this now rather than um, do all the seams because I'm still able to lay it flat. So I'm just going to go along and embellish this part now. I'm going to do the left sleeve and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the right sleeve. And as you can see, I've sort of carefully folded or rolled up the sections I'm not working on so that they don't get damaged. So yeah, I will go and do this now. I appreciate that it's very tempting to sew all the seams at once. But this is the safest way to do it. And it, if you want a jacket that's going to last, this is the way to do it. So next I did the Amelie themed fabric haul with um, greens, mainly greens and reds and lots of vintage prints. The top two bits of fabric are the same. It's just a two yard cut and a three yard cut. And I was originally going to make a shirt out of the two yards and a sort of smaller vintage dress out of the three yards. But now I'm thinking maybe a shirt dress with long puffy sleeves, billowy sleeves out of all five yards. That would be awesome. Maybe. Anyway, so back to the jacket. And I just proceeded to very slowly work my way from one wrist right up to the neckline and then sort of skip the back bit and then worked from the other wrist right into the center as well. There's a little bit around the neckline that I did, but I need to keep that seam allowance clear because uh, for when I'm sewing the neckline. So yeah, it, it took forever. Oh my goodness. It just took <laughs> forever and I'm so glad that I did it when it was flat because when you're working with light sequins which are basically no weight at all it's just incredibly difficult to keep the tension but without over pulling it and yeah and also without it being loose too loose so that everything sort of waves around anyway so I eventually finished it and then um, I turned it in so that the right sides were together and I pinned the sides and the under sleeves together very carefully. And then I sewed them, machine sewed them. And normally if you're making this out of a regular fabric, then you just clip the curves under the sleeves. But because it's tweed, I clip the backing fabric, but I don't clip the tweed because with tweed, it's just so delicate as it is. You don't want to just start randomly snipping things. So yeah, 
I clip the backing fabric, but um, it's also easier if you just do the pin the straights first, then clip the curves. And so once they were clipped, then I pinned back the seam allowance and then I hand stitch them down. It is awkward just because of the way the jacket's constructed, but I got there eventually. And um, so it's it just makes the jacket so much more secure. Um, no, you don't iron it at this point. You just put, um, that's what the pins are for. You pin the seam allowance back and then you hand stitch it into place and it stays because you're sort of pr holding pressure on it as you stitch it and then I also turn the cuffs up they're four centimeters which is like an inch or just over an inch and so now it was ready to turn the whole thing in the correct way and oh my goodness that was much trickier than you would think and I just took a lot of time so if you're doing this I don't if you're a bit of a beginner I seriously don't recommend this but you're going to do what you do anyway just take your time and if you're getting frustrated just walk away go and have a coffee and come back because it's really really delicate and if you just try and rip the sleeves through you will tear off all the embellishment so as you can see I've still got these sections under the arms that have got ball patches on them so I have to do that but um yeah it's looking pretty good and oh the colors in this they're just amazing because I've got some um silver sequins in there they act like little mirrors so all the rainbow threads in the tweed sort of it's sort of holding mirrors up to itself it is just the most darling thing but I still think it's not to look at me look at me like it just looks quite plain if you look at it from far away but if you sort of take the time to actually look at each thing then it's magnificent it's just so cute and it's got so much character it's just so bright and happy I love it oh and sometimes I get people asking me why my bench is so messy it's because I'm attaching all these sequins and like hand sew sewing on all these sequins and beads. You sort of scratch the um, bench as you go. So that's why it looks like that. And here it is from the back, the front and the side. Uh, because I haven't done the neckline yet, it's not going to sit well on the mannequin until I've sewn the neckline in. And I'm, I can't cut the neckline into the prick correct placement yet but you get a rough idea of what it's going to look like and now I am off to embellish the ball patches under the sleeves so this area you don't want your sleeve catching on the side of the jacket so I'm going to use less height in these bits under here but they will still be embellished but yeah there won't be as many big stacks of sequin and beads as there are say in the shoulder area several years later only joking so I finally finished those patches under the on the sides and under the sleeves so I'll and I also turned up the hem and hand stitched that down so it's looking more like a jacket which is very pleasing here we go I've lifted up the sleeve to just show you so I just sort of went with all the lines and this is the right side and here's the left side so it's looking absolutely gorgeous now. So I've popped it on the mannequin and I put it over on the sideboard. I've unfortunately only ended up using up half the container of sequins, but I'm definitely going to do another jacket that's just, I think I'll do one, a netting one that just has sequin and beads on it. So I won't use any tweed in it. Anyway, we will leave this over on the sideboard and get out some silk and make the lining. So the actual pattern has no lining. You're just supposed to put tiny bits of facing, like bias width bits of facing around the front top and the back top but so um, what you have to do before you can cut your lining is to just make a few more markings on your pieces so you need your front piece and your back piece and first things first um, I'll do the easiest thing first so the wrists um, on the pattern there's the end of the sleeve and then there's a four centimeters in there's a hemline 
with French jackets, you're supposed to always talk in metric, so um, about an inch or so in. What you do halfway between those two lines, two centimetres from the edge, is where you mark your lining line. So just mark two centimetres or just fold the bottom of your pattern into the hemline that you've marked and that will leave you the C. So as you can see, I've turned it up and that's the hemline there and that's and then if you unfolded it, that would be the end. Now what we're going to do is make lining that has to go past the hemline and tuck the raw edge under. Next thing you do is usually add a centre back pleat to um, when you're altering a pattern to be a lining piece. But this is a quite a baggy jacket and it's a size 8 and I normally make a size 6. So we won't do that. Like even if it's your right size, we won't do it because it's a baggy fit jacket with the dolman sleeves. So the next thing you do is the bottom of the front, bottom of the back, do that thing like you did on the cuff. Fold the bottom up to the hemline so that you your lining piece will be two centimetres shorter than the rest. Okay, so now the last thing we have to do is see the front of your jacket. It, it's got a facing, so the edge of your piece isn't just seam line from the edge of your front jacket. It's actually got like a, a couple of inches tucked underneath it or like five centimetres. So what we have to do on this pattern piece is find the centre front line. It's marked on the piece and then fold your pattern piece at that. So see, I folded it back. So this bit is the facing. So it's still just tweed, but the point is the centre line has been folded on, so it's correct. Now you have to draw on where your seam line is going to be because there's a seam allowance, obviously. And so now you know where your facing ends and you know where your actual seam line is going to be when you machine sew it to the lining piece. Now you can turn it over and okay, this is where your seam line is going to be. And then, so just draw that on. And then because obviously you need a seam allowance, you have to add a centimetre or a half or whatever you do for your seam allowance on. You have to add that as well. So see, this is it on the actual jacket. So this is the facing and you can see where the seam allowance line is going to be. And then you have to just add your so I've just made it really simple here of like this is where the facing ends this is where the the tweed seam line is this is where the lining seam line is which is the same thing and this is where the lining plus seam allowance is going to be so now the lining with seam allowance we just draw a big line on that and then that is how big our silk piece is going to needs to be whereas our tweed is, so it's completely different size than our tweed pieces. Okay, so then you just draw that line along the whole thing and then you fold it under and you cut it. I know this silk is weird. It's different than anything I've ever used before. That's kind of why I bought it. But I'm my tweed is white, which means when I top stitch it, I'm going to have to use white thread. So that is why I'm using this silk, because when I do my top stitching, it's going to have white thread. There's not going to be very many visible stitches, but there will be a few. So I went ahead and cut this out. Oh my goodness, I'm used to cutting out like tailored jackets with small pieces, whereas this dolman sleeve jacket, you just have to cut out. It's literally three massive weird shaped pieces. It used so much fabric. Anyway, so I've cut out my three pieces. I've pinned them together. So the left front, right front and the back. I actually had to cut the back with a center seam as much as I hate it. I had to just because it was just taking up so much fabric. Anyway, so I have cut them out, pinned them together and then sewn them. When you sew with your machine using silk, you need to use Microtex needles because they're sharper and they won't... Um, damage your fabric and then once you've got your lining then you pin your lining to the jacket you do that by laying the jacket flat on your table so that you can see the edge of the 
facing so you can see the edge of the tweed pieces and I've carefully folded the sleeves into the center so that they're out of the way and things won't get caught on them. It does take a while to place it correctly but you have to it's worth the time. Then you lay the right side down of the silk and you match up the two edges. So here you go. I first pin one edge and then I sort of pulled the whole thing over a little bit so it would fit and I did the other edge. It's supposed to be a little bit of a tight fit here because you've kind of turned everything inside out. Once you turn it back in the correct way, it will fit nicely. So here we go. Then you machine sew the sides together. The next step is a bit confusing. So I'll just show you the finished jacket. Okay, see how the left front has an edge there that's that edge is called the center front line now we're totally inside out everything's inside out and the green pin marks the center front line and there's another pin at the other end so here we go I've pinned the center front line on the left side and the center front line on the right side and once I had done them one, you can have to do them first. Once they're done, then you can pin the neckline. But you have to do the center front lines first. Otherwise, you won't know which bit is the lining and which bit is the outer jacket because there, there's no seam line to mark it. It's just literally a fold. So then you machine sew it. I only did it at two centimeters, which is slightly bigger than a normal seam allowance. Normally I double my seam allowance, which I think I'll do next time. Anyway, machine sewed that. And then the next thing you do is you clip the curve. Again, just clip the backing fabric. Don't cut into tweed. It's just, tweed is fragile enough. Just clip the curve of the backing fabric so that it'll sit properly when you turn it out but don't damage the tweed at all. So then I turned it out making sure I pin, um, poked in the gently poked out the corners the front top corners and then you pin the two fronts together and you pin around the neckline because the next thing you're going to have to do is the top stitching um, I always get asked this question, can you machine top stitch? Obviously, when you're working on an embellished jacket, no, you can't. You cannot use a sewing machine when there's, you know, 3D elements. But if it's just a plain one, if you're using tweed, I would say no, absolutely don't wreck. Tweed is such a specific texture and it's so delicate and part of its appeal is the way it sits and if you run a machine over it it squashes it and it pushes it all the wrong way so I would never use machines top stitching on tweed but each their own so um, I've put the pins into place and then I hand stitched around it and so I just go from the bottom of one side here and then I go all the way up the front and then I go, I'm slowly making my way up here. I got so distracted by the beautiful sequence of beads. Then you go right round the neckline and then you hand stitch down. And it does take a lot of time, but it just looks so perfect once it's done. So then I just decided to do a little bit of a photo shoot. It's not finished yet. I've still got to add beads and like embellishments around the neckline to the little bald patches that I needed to leave vacant while I was because you need to machine sew so but I decided to do a little bit of a fashion shoot anyway because by the time I did all the embellishment it was going to be dark so I thought I'd do this in because everything looks better in natural light so here it is and I'm just sort of moving around not to get you dizzy but you can't see how beautifully the sequins flicker in the light unless I sort of move around so that's why I'm sort of I'm trying to do it in slow motion so that I don't make you seasick but you do actually have to move or you can't see the beauty you know the full beauty of the sequins so here we go I've taken it off the mannequin and I'm hand stitching so it as I said it does take a long time to do the hand stitching but in my mind it just it looks so beautiful and I've had a few people say you can't even see the top stitching yeah that's kind of why I do it by hand 
and you can tell that it's sitting perfectly and it could not sit perfectly if it wasn't stitched in place. So it's like when you have a really elaborate hairstyle and there's bobby pins in there, you can't actually see the bobbing pins, but they're doing their job and they're invisible. So it's kind of the same thing. So this is me just pointing out all the bald patches where I have to embellish. So yeah, unfortunately, there's still a lot of work to do. This is halfway through, through me adding the beads. So I've done that bit that I, you just saw. And now here you can see that still see the bald patches around the other half. So this is the part that I've done. And it just makes such a difference. So it is the most tedious, the most technically demanding bit because everything is kind of made. So you either, you sort of have to delicately put one hand inside the jacket and, and have the other hand outside the jacket. So it is a total struggle and a juggle, but um, eventually I got it done. Eventually, oh my gosh, it just takes so long. So once the jacket was finally, finally done, well, the embellishments finished. So now I just had to do the, um, the bottoms and I have to stitch the silk lining down because I don't need to go inside the jacket anymore. It's time to make it into a jacket that's wearable. So we need to pull through the sleeves into the actual sleeves and pin them into place. So you just tuck in the raw edges and then pin it into place. And once it's pinned into place, then you have to hand stitch that down. Yes, it does have to be hand stitched. I just don't see how you could do this with a machine. It would show through on the outside, even if it wasn't, you know, you can't do it because it's embellished, but you couldn't do it otherwise anyway. And then once you've done the both sleeves, the cuffs, then the next thing is to do the hem around the bottom of the torso of the jacket. And again, you just pin under the raw edge, make sure it's over the raw edges of the tweed. And once it's pinned properly into place, then you hand stitch that as well. And here we go. As I said, I ended up losing the light by now. I am so proud of this jacket. It has taken me two weeks. I started it, I think, two days before the start of this month. And it's almost two weeks now. So yeah, so it's pretty much bang on two weeks and oh, there's so much work in this jacket, so much beading and, but I'm just so proud of it. It was really, really difficult to machine so certain sections. So I can completely understand why embellished jackets are normally hand stitched together, the long seams, because it's just impossible to use a sewing machine like the weight is just such an unusual weight and it's delicate in just really odd ways. So the things that you have to be careful about, I just, it, they're not things that you naturally think about. But anyway, um, I do constantly get asked, how long does it take to make a jacket or how long would it take someone who doesn't have decades of experience? Oh, this is me sort of thinking about what could have been if I'd use different coloured beading. And it, my, I'm happy with this, but I do always wonder what a different version would be. I'm always so tempted to buy like enough to make three jackets so I can make three different versions of the same jacket. Anyway, when I started making jackets, I used to make one every two months. I used to take a month to make the tweed jacket with everything hand stitched. And then I would take a month to do the beading and I didn't work on it all the time. It was mostly sort of on the weekends type thing and a little bit at night. With the beading, it takes much more time. It takes about twice as much time at least to do the beading as it does to do the make an actual jacket. So beading does take an absolutely huge amount of time. But I just, there's no jacket like this in the world and there never will be. So I think it's worth it. Oh, and at this point, I just got obsessed with the shadow. You can see the embellishment, like the height and detail of the embellishment so clearly on the shadow, like on the silhouette. It's amazing because when you look at it, you're sort of dazzled by the, the glitter and glam of it. Whereas when you 
when you're just looking at the shadow, all you see is the technical aspect. You don't see the pretty colours. It's very cool. Or maybe I'm just easily amused. Anyway, that is it for this video. I highly recommend this jacket pattern. It's um, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter next time I do it just because I'm so short waisted. And as I said, I'm going to make the neckline deeper. So a little bit further away from the neck, just because I have such small, tiny shoulders, it makes me look more balanced. But apart from that, it's a great pattern, surprisingly good pattern. It's not, I don't think it's as easy as, um, it says super easy. I think um, you do need to have a little bit of experience to do it. Otherwise, just go really slowly and don't get too frustrated, like pulling the sleeves through or anything like that. But all in all, really like this pattern. Definitely going to make it again. And I'm surprised by how much I love this silk. Actually, this is the tweed that made me buy this silk so not that surprised and I think that's why I like this beading so much and I'm not so regretful about not using green beads because uh, such a good match anyway I think what you'll see next from me will be the layer cake dress and then after that we will have another tweed jacket with a different pattern I'm also getting loads of requests for um, a beading video. So beading for beginners or beading 101, everything about beading that you should have known if before you start your first beading project. So if there's any specific questions or specific projects you want to tackle as a beginner, tell me what project you want to tackle and I'll tell you how I wish I'd done it the first time I did it because I did make a lot of mistakes. It was a few decades ago that I started beading. But um, yeah, if you've got really specific questions, let me know because I'm just getting a lot of general ones at the moment and it's kind of hard to know if I'm interpreting the question correctly. So the more specific, the better, so that I won't misunderstand the question. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. It has been a little bit of a long one, but oh my gosh, it covered so much work. And I'm just really proud of the outcome. So thank you again for watching. I hope you've been inspired to tackle a project you think is maybe a little too challenging, because I was not sure about this one, but Oh, I love the way it turned out. Anyway, happy sewing.